Now, Pam is someone you will probably relate to. She is a menopausal woman and can speak to us on our level about fitness. And she's one of those like me who's been pretty passionate about exercise her whole life. And she started running at age 11 and she pretty much hasn't stopped. <laughs> she then became a group exercise instructor and personal trainer in 1997 and has loved inspiring women on their health and wellness journeys. So can you all tell that, that she's from California too? So wait, we were not done. She's also a coach on the Fit Radio and TerraCore apps, an international speaker and a personal fitness coach. And she has a very interesting life-changing story that she's going to tell us that explains how after she got hit by a car on one of her runs, her focus shifted from helping women just lose weight to actually taking control of their health and getting strong to live long, active lives. So without further ado, let's meet Pam Sherman. Welcome. So happy to be here finally. So let's start with the car crash. Like It's a crazy story. Tell, tell people what happened. Yeah, I, I used to be a long distance runner. I used to run marathons when I was young and didn't know any better and then graduated half marathons. And then my friends and I would go down to San Francisco every January and run the hot chocolate run. It was a 9.3 race, 15K, which was great after running the longer races. That's moderate. And this day in December, I normally am a, I'm a morning worker outer, Zora. I, <laughs> high energy, don't need coffee, worker first thing. That Thursday, is our coffee. Has, <laughs> that, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I like the taste of coffee, but I definitely don't need it. Yeah. And that day, my husband and I left to go finish our kids' Christmas shopping, went to the mall, went out to lunch, saw a movie. So it wasn't until 3 p.m. that I went out for a run. Now, in California, it was beautiful. It was like a 50-degree day. It was actually December 17th of 2016 because um, that, that anniversary day is coming up. Mm. And I was had my Garmin on a good pace running 815 for you know my minute per mile pace and all of a sudden I put my hand out and screamed a car was taking a right out of a parking lot and only looked left many of us do that you just mm -hmm. look left if you're turning right the only problem yeah. was I was right there and while I was not sprinting I was going too fast to stop oh. so because I screamed I literally face planted into the windshield where I left a tooth but thankfully, our brains are so delightful and go night night when that stuff happens. I woke up rolling on the road, watching the driver go, drive away. You're kidding me. The driver left. Well, well he it ended is... up pulling. He ended up pulling around and pulling back into the parking lot. Oh. But as I was rolling, I saw the car. And I'm like, and I said, "This is not my effing life." Like I was, come on, really. Um, and it was. Uh, I think your body goes into natural survival mode at that point because both my kids play soccer and I knew there's so much concussion talk when, you know, when they're little, uh, that I knew I should not stand up. And so I crawled back to the sidewalk and I had lost, there was three teeth on the road that mm. the fireman picked up lately. from the root. Like, I don't even know how that happens. How do they, I mean, oh, no crawled way. back to the sidewalk. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm sitting on the sidewalk and mouth, mouth injury is, is a lot, very bloody. And I just, you know, waited for help to come. And it's, it was a life-changing moment for me. And I say that accident happened for me, not to me. Mm. My life is so much bigger. I'm reaching so many more women now than I ever would have. Because I was teaching in the classroom and I was doing personal training. I was, my career was very small. Even though I taught many people, it was small. It was very local. Because of that, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking, I'm working with Karen Martell as our fitness expert. You know, I've been on several podcasts. Like I was a local on my um, Fox 40, their health expert for a couple of years. Like it was really great. So I think the universe came in and said, we're going to, we're going to correct your course a little bit because you need to reach more women on their journey. Now for when I first started teaching, it was uh, very lightweight, lots of cardio, skinny, skinny was a word. And that word actually makes me crazy. Yeah. Cause you see a skinny elderly person in the grocery store, they are frail. Yep. There is nothing good about being skinny. And after that accident, I realized now my, my Garmin was smashed open. So had I not been wearing a watch, I probably would have broken my wrist. That's my guess. I'm thinking my wrist hit the ground first, but I did not break any bones. 
and I'm certain there was a little bit of luck to that. However, I had been strength training for the regular for about two years, and my strong muscles protected my bones. So once I could gather my wits about me, I thought, I need to talk about being strong, not being skinny. Yes, I, you know, we all have a happy number, all the things. However, it's really strength that's going to carry you for the rest of your life. And that's really been my mission since then is to encourage women to strength train, to eat more protein, to think about their long-term health, not just to fit into a pair of pants. How do you want to feel when you're 80? I want to be badass. I want to be, if my kids ever have kids, I want to be playing with their kids, right? Mm -hmm. I want to go on beach vacations and do all the things. So my, my shift really changed after that accident. It's a crazy story. And I like the message that you're telling people is, yeah, it's, it's not strength training or getting fit or getting a good body composition. It's not about so much about the looks as which we all chase the looks, but when the shit hits the fan, then that training may just save your life. And that's a, a really good perspective that you have. And it's a really great message. And unfortunately it's like, prevention and prevention is not sexy. It's not interesting. It's, we're always want to fix things after they're broken. And actually that, that, that message actually sounds like the one I, I told my, I used to tell my kids when, when I was really into, um, more of like running, like you got to learn, you guys have to learn how to run. You got to run it fast. And, uh, and we were traveling a lot and we're always, you know, uh, going, catching a plane or something. And I remember one day, my daughter, she forgot something on the plane. We had to run back to it and come back and she couldn't run. And I was like, you see, this is why I'm telling you to learn how to run because <laughs> you never know when you need it or, the, you know, someone's going to chase you. And then you got to run faster than that. <laughs> like, of course I'm planting all this fear into my kid's head, but you know, you never know. You never know when you're going to need these, these skills, these life, life-saving skills. So I am bo on board with you about the, the strength and the muscle and, and being strong, especially as we are women going through this menopause transition. We're not so quote unquote young anymore. We don't see, see our, our you know, former self, but we're not old either. Right. So we still have time. And, and there's a really famous gerontologist called Gene Cohen. And he uh, called this sort of the, uh, the if not now, then the when years. Right. If you're going to do something, we tend to go, oh, I'm going to do it now. I'm not going to, you know, let's write a book or create a new business or get in a new relationship or whatever it is. It's, it's a life changing moment for us. So now is a great time to say, hey, I'm going to get strong. And because I don't want to be, frail and fall and get a, a fracture. And then we all know, I mean, if you've been listening, anyone's been listening for more than a minute, how much I talk about fall prevention and what happens when you fall, because in within, within six months, the, the death rate is, I can't remember the exact number, but it's pretty high. It's like 30% or something of dying within, within six months of that fall. So and there are many reasons why that can happen. It's it's not because necessarily of the fall itself, but maybe there's an infection in the, uh, in the hospital or you, you're you stuck at home and you get into this depression and just things spiral out of control. So it's, it's like, I can't stress it enough, like how important it is to start lifting heavy weights and get strong. And, um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, because, um, you know, I think this is, but I want to, I want to leave that for later, but I want to, I want to ask you, cause I've been rambling a little bit too much. <laughs> what was your career? So your career, like before the accident, you said you were lifting some you know, light weights and that during that whole, like Jane Fonda era kind of stuff. And then now, um, you're actually getting people strong. So that kind of answer, that was sort of one of my next question. But one other question I have before we move on is, is have the injuries that you had, you know, you talked about your, it was just your teeth. I mean, there was nothing else that, that happened that could affect your health and your, you, that ability to get back to training and your, your life that you love. No, it, it was so interesting. So I had a, a split lip that they sewed up and I was in the trauma, um, the ICU for one night and, you know, MRI of, you know, your, my whole body and a, a brain MRI and the jaw doctor came and he couldn't believe I didn't break my jaw. And I was discharged the next day. I had a slight brain bleed that healed up the next day which I didn't know this till many years later, my daughter who was six, 17 at the time, she was a junior in high school. She said, I did not sleep that night. I thought you were going to die. We watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy. So she, oh. <laughs> she thought the worst. 
And when they gave me my discharge papers, I said, okay, get your stitches out in a week. Wow. That's like, unbelievable. That's it. And I had follow-up CT scans to see if there was going to be any additional damage, like every six months for two years, because they said things could happen. Now I have an amazing sports. He's a somatic healer, chiropractor, um, physical therapist. He, he has many degrees behind his name. I walked in to see him three days after the accident and he was like, what happened? And I told him, he's like, okay, you're going to come see me every two weeks for six months. And then I went down to once a month. And because of him, I, I am pain-free. I was running a month later. Oh my goodness. I wow. was in my back. Yeah. I was in my backyard. Uh, I got hit on a uh, Saturday. I was in my backyard by Tuesday, just kind of like lifting weights, squatting. My husband's like, what are you doing? I said, I need to see what feels good. Mm. My left, my left side was a little tender. I had a little scrape on my knee because I got hit on my left side, but I was really back to in about four or five weeks. I'm not going to say normal because I had a lot of atrophy because it was obviously very stressful to my body. And I had to have a, a lot of really gross oral surgeries. I know people don't even like to get their teeth clean, so I'm not going to talk about that. But after every surgery, there's like, you know, you have to take time off. Your body has to heal. And then as soon as I could, I'd start working out again. So I went from, and I, I laugh now when I first started teaching body sculpt classes, I'd be like, okay, grab your heavy weights. And my heavy weights were eight pounds right back in the, in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I, I started, I, I, yeah. And then I started a real strength training program in 2014, full body, all, you know, the squats, Bulgarian split squats, lunges, push-ups. And when I started, it was, I was so weak. It was after my dad had died and it was a very emotional time. I could barely do a push-up on my knee. I was so weak. So from then to doing two years on the regular, my body was strong. It wow. prepared me for what I had to go through, which was great. Amazing. Uh, so um, again, you know, this is so important uh, to, to take care of your body. And d when you run, when, when you run, I don't know, when you were starting to run on, maybe if you're running now, you don't have, if you're running on the road or in nature, are you any, is there any kind of trauma still lingering there? No, I only wear one earbud. I don't ever wear mm -hmm. two, even mm -hmm. though I, that couldn't have, have stopped. There was one time maybe within the first six months that I was walking on the sidewalk and I heard a fire truck and I full on had a panic attack. Oh, interesting. And I, yeah. And I had never had one before. And I, I started sweating and I was like, but no, besides that, I, and here's what, what and that there's so many great things that happened from this accident. I used to be a running snob because I ran marathons. Like, oh, if it's not three or four miles, why bother? When I could run that first mile after I got hit, nothing but gratitude. And I thought I need to change everything about my way of thinking because every minute you spend on yourself and your health is worth it. Every minute. Mm, well said. So how did you even get into fitness and nutrition, this health health path anyways. And I mean, I don't know if you know, you said it was, you started running at 11, but yes. was it then or after? Well, my dad was an amazing runner in college and he was one of those guys in the sixties and seventies who was running for pleasure. Like the people be like, what is he doing? And <laughs> right. And I have two big brothers who were always into sports. So in the seventies, the parents would say, you guys go outside, watch your sister. You know, they didn't care where we were, but I had to stay with them. So I, I was a tomboy by nature because I had to be with them. And then one day I asked my dad if I could go run with him. And at the time we lived in Connecticut, which was very hilly. So he was very kind and said, let's go to the high school track. And I ran two miles without stopping. And I had that runner's high. It, it mm. felt amazing. So as a fifth grader, I started running on my own. Mm, wow. It, it also served as a way to get out of my a crazy emotional household. Like it was my stress relief, stress management. But I will tell you, I was born a trainer, Zora. I remember being 12 years old with my best friend who was 10. And we were going to go for a run. And she wanted to eat an Eskimo pie. And I said, we'll get a cramp. Let's run first. And then we'll have the Eskimo pie. And <laughs> we're still friends to this day. And we laugh about it. She's like, you were a trainer even before you were a trainer. Oh, that is and so, so funny. Yeah, I did track and cross country <laughs> in high school. And then I was a coach for my high school cross country team. And then after I finished college, my first roommate out in California was a group exercise instructor. 
and she saw how much I loved exercise. So she's like, hey, there's an 18 week course at the local college, you should take it. I took it, I got certified and I knew I didn't wanna work full time when my kids were little. So it was the perfect job for me because I was born just, I love working with women and helping motivate them on their journey. And to do that, and I mean, you don't make a lot of money, but you know, the kids could go and play with their friends and go, you know, get out of the house. And six months after I got certified to be a teacher, I got certified to be a trainer because I thought I'll probably train women who I'm teaching. And that's what I did for my, all my kids growing up lives. And it was great because I could still carpool. I could still make breakfast, pack their lunches, do all the things, Mm -hmm. and then motivate and inspire women, mostly women, a couple of guys, but mostly women on their health journey for the better part of 20 years until I got hit. And then are your kids the same? I mean, did this gene pass on to them? They are both athletes. They're all athletes? Yes. And I'm the mom that on holidays, we do a family workout. Every ah. on, <laughs> when they were little kids on mother's day we would go to the track and do a workout uh it's it's really they important love it. to me they love it they they love it and hate it my son lifts very heavy weights so we have a little gym in my backyard who always finishes the workout first yeah and it just it just bugs him but he <laughs> likes to take a lot of rest and i just i'm like i just go 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 Oh, that's so funny. Mama still beating her kids. That is hilarious. It's not going to, it's not going to last forever. I know that. Yeah, but still, I mean, (laughs) who knows? Who knows? Right. We're a different generation now, right? There's you're 54 now, 56. 56. Okay. So yeah, 56 is, you look different. I'm sure than your mom at 56, right? It's the generations go. We, this is what 56 looks like now. So if you guys are watching YouTube, she looks fabulous. Her teeth are perfect. (laughs) Thank Um, you. I spent two years putting it back in my head. (laughs) Imagine. So let's speak to the woman who's now going through this menopause transition. And she may be so many women I've worked with, she may be training hard and more than ever before eating less than she normally does. And she's still, you know, trying to get to her ideal body composition. It just seems like, like what worked for her in the past is definitely not working for her anymore. And I'm sure you have clients like this in their forties and fifties. And so I want you to explain like what is going on here and, and how are you helping these women reach their goals? You cannot compare yourself to your former self, ladies. You just, you cannot. And too much exercise is not great for your body as you age. It puts it so much stress on the inside. Whereas I am guilty. I used to be a two a day or more is better. It runs your body into the ground, your cortisol, your adrenals, it all gets jacked up. I can't even say, I mean, it just, they all get sideways it drives your hunger up while you're trying to eat less and you're never going to lose weight because your body's stressed. When your body's under stress, you're never going to lose weight. So I tell women, you got to dial back. Orange cherry is not your best friend. Hard cardio is not your best friend. Strength training is your best friend. I say, do the cardio you like. Hit is great, short and sweet. That long, hard stuff is not going to serve you on this journey. And as far as eating less, I highly encourage you to eat more, more protein, more vegetables. Women, we are not like Fred Flintstone with a great big turkey leg, but you need way more protein than you're getting now. You probably need double actually than what you're getting on the daily. Uh, I would just listen to a lot of podcasts with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, who just had a book come out, Strong for Life. She's an expert on muscle, saying muscle is the organ of longevity. And she said women probably get 70 grams a day when really you need 0.7 to 1.0 grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight. Yeah. And the reason you want that is because our muscles protect our bones and we want not to fall later on. We want to be strong. We want to be able to sit down and stand up. It's so, so important. So dialing back on the crazy intense exercise, focusing on lifting three to four to five days a week, daily walking is huge and wonderful and we should all be doing more of it. Um, and more is not better. I just have to say more, especially more cardio is not better. It's not going to get you to your goals ever. In fact, I had to stop running because I had a running injury and that's when I started lifting on the regular, my body looked way better from only strength training than it ever did. In fact, I was at my heaviest as a marathon runner. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, as of the eighties, we didn't know how to eat in the eighties. It was, yeah, I know, but you do see some runners yeah, that are super thin and there's no muscle mass and, and they look older than they are. 
And it's just because of the stress on the body because they're overdoing it. I'm not saying all runners are like this, but you just see some professional runners and it's like, oof, you know, the sprinters look a little different, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're not doing as, uh, as long, uh, you know, the, the long, intense exercises like that. And maybe they also do some strength training, but I hear you. I am so on board with you with, with, uh, the shift. And then when I've been working with women like this, um, it, it, they were shocked that I would tell them to eat more and exercise less. They were, they, you know, were so scared. And, uh, and I just had to say, I promise everything will be fine. And, you know, of course not eat anything you want, but, but they had yeah. their they're so often these women had their diets pretty dialed in. It's just that they were not eating enough calories, not eating enough food. And then, and that's a huge stress. And then, uh, and fasting like crazy. And then they're adding the another stress, uh, which is the exercise and exercise is, is a stress. It's the recovery uh, that is, um, you know, allows your body to build the muscle mass and process everything that's been going on. And, and it is really crucial. And I do what we were, what I figured out with these women eventually. And as I suppose I was starting the health coach is that, yeah, when cortisol is too high for too long, then it loves to hold on to that body fat, right? Especially in the belly as we, as we get through menopause. So if you got stressed out from work and then you go and exercise like crazy, and then you're fasting too much. And like, of course you're going to be in this fight or flight state. And that's when I would say, okay, let's, let's stop this chronic cardio. And we love cortisol. It's great. It's supposed to be high in the morning, right. And wake us up yeah. and keep us alert, but we don't want it to be high all the time, all day long. So then we would incorporate some yoga or walks in nature. <laughs> and suddenly like the belly fat started to melt. And of course, incorporating strength training. And what I've, I've found out through my clients is that when I got them on strength training, they they felt so good. They felt empowered. Yeah. And, uh, and that was really, really, uh, lovely to see in that, that spark in their eye that, wow, I never tried this and I actually feel really good and I feel really strong. So really, I am on board with you hundred percent. And then there's that whole getting the protein component. Um, and we do sound like a bunch of carnivores, like crazy, but you can get protein from so many sources, but it can be a challenge. So how do you, if someone says, okay, they, they, they want to get to an ideal body weight of what 120 or 130 or whatever it is, depending on your height and weight, of course that could be, mm -hmm. uh, it is. And then would you say have 120 grams of protein a more or less hundred, 120 per day? How do you get them to do this? It, it fit it all in, in a day. Women, most women need to supplement with protein shakes. It's very hard for us to physically eat that much chicken, beef, fish. It is just, it, it, it is very filling. In fact, I had a friend just say to me, you know, I just can't eat that much protein. I get too full. <laughs> that, yeah. That's good. <laughs> want to get full. Uh, so typically one or two protein shakes along with a couple meals is really a good way to get there. I physically can eat that much. And in the morning, I'm not hungry for food. I'll have a protein shake after my workout and that holds me to lunch. And then I'll have another protein shake somewhere in there just to get, because I'm trying to get 130 to 150 grams a day. I'm 5'7". I'm like 140 to 145. So that's really my ideal. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with supplementing a good shake. You just have to find one that's going to be best for you. And one thing we didn't talk about, Zora, sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of women like to brag about how little sleep they can get away with mm. when sleep is a number one thing you can do for your health period if you don't sleep well and in menopause oh my gosh it is a shit show yeah some nights are great some nights aren't but when you don't sleep well you're not going to want to work out or you're not going to have the energy to work out your brain's going to crave sugar you're going to be really lethargic make sure you're getting the right amount of sleep for you and everyone's different they say six to eight hours so know your window, really regular, and then you travel a lot, this must be hard for you, but pretty regular sleep schedule, seven days a week for the most part, and make your sleep a priority is a huge part of weight loss. So if your body is stressed and it's tired, it's not going to release the weight. No, and it's not going to ask for broccoli and chicken you know, for sure. No. <laughs> it's it's going to ask for something else. That's why it's always, it's funny. Cause I do, when I did, when I was working with more health coaching, these women in the, in this perimenopause phase, they were, I would tell them really let's, let's, you're so stressed out and, and the body's so in so much stress. Let's like not worry about the food and exercise for now. Let's just work on your sleep. And 
and, and the sleep and the stress component obviously go together. And then once we got that, oh my God, then it was so much easier to tell them eat chicken broccoli or so much, you know, easy to, to go and exercise it because, it, you know, they were burnt out and they were tired. So if you can fix that component first, at least, uh, or, you know, you can do this all in combination, but really, I think you're so glad you brought up the sleep component. And on top of it, I can't remember the hours, but I think it's between one and three or so that the, um, growth hormone is released during sleep. Maybe it's earlier. I remember I was being, I was like, oh my God, I got to make sure I'm asleep. And I'm usually asleep. I wasn't worried. That's why I can't remember, but maybe it's 12 and two. There's some window that if you are not asleep during that time, you've robbed yourself of growth hormone and you cannot, you know, all that exercise and protein that you ate is like, well, it's just not going to work as well. If you, if you don't get that growth hormone, right. It would, it's, it helps so much. Yeah. And there's so many sleep trackers. I love my aura ring. Yeah. It shows me my HRV balance, you know, the sleep, the top body temperature. What did I just read? You can't, you can't track what you don't measure. If you don't measure your sleep, how do you know if you're getting good sleep? I mean, there's some days I think, I don't think I slept that well. Oh, seven hours and 20 minutes. I sure did get a good night's sleep. Like it's really important <laughs> to know that. And there's a lot of things that affect your sleep that you might not be aware of. Ladies, I'm so sorry to say this, but wine affects your sleep alcohol, any kind of alcohol, alcohol it's right? Just, it's not going to say, oh, it's a it can go gin and tonics now. <laughs> yeah. It's as we get older, it's harder to process it. And in fact, my husband will never hear this podcast. He, um, put his <laughs> oar ring to the side because he didn't like what it said on the weekends when he enjoys a couple adult beverages. Yeah. It actually yeah. pissed him off. So he's like, forget this ring. I'm like, so don't wear it on the weekends and wear it Monday through Thursday, but it's but don't look at it. Data. <laughs> Just don't open the app. <laughs> it's it's data. That's all it is. Yeah. It's it's data. And it's good. It's really good data to have. So if you don't, I, that's my, I don't like to wear the whole Apple watch, but I really love the ring for that. I love the ring too. The, or we're talking about the aura ring, O-U-R-A. And of course, you know, there's, there's no affiliation. Like, I don't think they even give any, they're like so hard. <laughs> it's a pity <laughs> because I'd love to be affiliated, but they, um, because I talk so much about it and everybody loves it, but the, this is the kind of thing that, uh, I've seen people and the way I approach it is when people ask me, should I get this and I get this? And I said, well, it depends on kind of, it's kind of like a scale, you know, scales give you so much data when you're looking at the body fat and the muscle yep. composition. And I love that. But if some people get stressed out looking at a scale and they don't really understand how to, um, process the information, they just go, oh, I gained a kilo. God damn it. And that's just going to ruin my day. And I've tried so hard. And what am I doing this for? And who knows if they gain a kilo of muscle, which means more than fat, or, you know, they, it just ruins their day. And the aura ring can sometimes do that too. If, if you wake up and you go, oh, I just, I, th you know, I think I slept pretty well. And then the aura ring tells you, you didn't. Then you go, oh no, <laughs> and you were off to a great start until you looked at that app. So the way I look at it is I just choose the data that I want to believe. So <laughs> if I felt like I slept well and I see a bad score, I ignore it. So no, it's okay. I, I believe myself because these are not... 100% accurate, right? They're they're far from yeah. super accurate. So it's, we look at trends and I, that's how I teach my clients is like, just look at the trends and you see if you're trending, uh, you know, your heart rate is going up all the time and it's not good. Uh, and you keep having, you know, stress, you're, are you stressed out? Maybe now it's time to take a vacation or time to get some kind of meditation practice every day, or if your HRV or heart rate availability, we want yeah. it to go up. And if it's going down, then you know, you can make changes. Or if it's going up, you say, what are you doing? Right. So it is, I think you've got to learn how to use these trackers rather than just look at one point in one day at time and go, uh, yeah, the good, bad. We, you know, that's this, this is what, um, do you know, Joel green, yes. he's, he, I was been reading his book as he is absolutely nuts, but he calls it baby talk right? This food, good, this food, bad. <laughs> it's like, no, there's so much more to it, but that's the way the human brain is like, yes or no, good, bad. So we, unfortunately, yeah, it takes a little bit more work uh, and more introspection and more understanding of, of the things that you do in your life or the data that you read to decide if this is something that's working for you or against you. So that's just sort of the way I take it. Well, yeah. And a lot of women in our age group as well, they um, when I ask them, I talked to a lot of women in, the, in their fifties and sixties, you know, tell me about your exercise. They say, I walk. And I said, that's daily movement. That's, we all should be walking every day. What are you doing for exercise? 
Pilates. You need to put stress on your body. You need more than walking. We, I want everybody to walk every day, super important. There's no magic number either. I think it's different for everybody, uh, but it's definitely more than 2000 steps a day. And what I like to say about that is track it like your sleep. If you're getting 5,000 this week, go for 6,000 next week. It's like baby steps really do lead to success. Um, I had a friend who did Pilates and then we were out, uh, out of town together and we had a kitchen workout where we pulled out the kitchen chairs and we're doing squats. And she's like, ow. I'm like, me? She's like, no, my quads hurt. I said, you need to be doing more squats. Like, <laughs> really? So you need to be putting load on your muscles to get them stronger. That's so, so important. So then uh, what do you recommend somebody who says, all oh, right, I got to start strength training and lift heavy things. What is, what should they do? I tell them to start with body weight, actually. Body weight exercises. And it's interesting, Zora, when I used to be a teacher, I wanted to crush you. I wanted to make you so sore that we come into class like, oh, Pam. And then I got hit and I thought, you know what? For most of my career, many people said, I don't have time to work out. So I actually made a 10 minute playlist on my YouTube channel, lots of body weight, lots of one dumbbell things. And I just talked to a client today who she's 63, lots of walking. And I'm like, and she agrees she needs to do strength training. Like I'm going to send you a lower body workout and a body workout 10 minutes each. Do the lower body today, walk, upper body tomorrow, walk. She texts me, oh my gosh, that feels so good. Where I think women want to do everything and be fit all by tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Do a little bit, chip away a little bit. Don't start lifting heavy if you're only doing, I shouldn't say only, sorry. If you are doing Pilates as your workout, start with body weight exercises, push-ups, squats, lunges, plank balancing exercises. We lose balance as we age. And so many people say, I don't have it. Do you work on it? No. Oh my gosh. You have to work on balance too. It's so, so important. Balance, mobility, and agility are my three favorites as we age. And, and not to, I mean, Pilates and yoga, all this stuff is great for balance. So it's not to poo poo that or so you don't do it. No, no absolutely. No. You need to incorporate that. It's just, it's the only, if it's the only thing you do, you know, I don't think it's enough. I mean, what, what do you think? Definitely not enough. I think you need, I think every woman needs strength training for the rest of their lives and do things that make you happy. I still like to run. It makes me happy. I don't do a lot of it, but a little bit on this, it, it really does make me happy. Walking my dog makes me happy. Um, I, I do a little bit of yoga in my backyard. That's nice. It shouldn't exercise should not be a chore. However, I want women to look at strength training, like brushing their teeth period. Mm -hmm. It's a healthy habit to do not, maybe not every day, but you know, on the weekly for the rest of your life. So what, let's talk to a woman who's going through menopause and she's having a lot of symptoms, the fatigue, the mm -hmm. hot flashes, the belly fat, the unexplained weight gain, uh, the brain fog. Um, again, not to scare women. This is one, you know, don't be afraid if you're not there yet. And you're like, Oh my God, I, these, all these things are bad things are going to happen to me. No, <laughs> it's, there's a spectrum on it in menopause. There's some women who have very severe and they have a lot of symptoms. And then there's a lot, the other spectrum women just feel nothing. It doesn't mean that nothing's happening. You are going through menopause and under the hood, there are things that are happening and changes. You just don't see them or feel them. And then there's, most people are somewhere in the middle where you may have one or two or a couple of the symptoms, and then it's anywhere from mild to uh, severe. So what does exercise do for these women and these, these symptoms? I think it helps with every aspect of your life. And really, you have to become the expert on you. So if you're having one of those crazy days where you're hot flashing like crazy, well, first of all, please get your hormones checked and talk to your doctor about hormone replacement therapy. It's, I've talked to so many women that are saying, I'm just going to gut it out. I'm like, you don't have to gut it out. Actually, more stress. Hormones are more, more stress. <laughs> keep, more, they more keep stress. that cortisol high if you want, but. <laughs> like. Yeah, it's, it can make your life so much better. Um, I would say you definitely have to become the expert on you. And then when you're having a crazy day, that's going to be a yoga day, stretching day, go for a gentle walk on the days you feel great. Those are going to be your lifting days where you're going to have a lot of energy to put into lifting on the days where you just like can barely get out of bed, go for a 10 minute walk a couple times a day. I mean, really become the expert on you. If you're feeling like I have nothing, put on your favorite song from the eighties and dance for three minutes. Oh my gosh. If anything else, that'll just boost your mood. 
it does not have to be all or nothing. It can be, how do I feel today? What's going to be appropriate for my body and what is not going to stress me out? Good way to put it. So um, we would say specifically, uh, and correct me if, if I'm wrong, say those days that you really, you didn't sleep really well. You had night sweats whole night long. You don't have the energy when you get out of bed getting out for a little walk in nature, seeing a bit of sunshine, getting set in that circadian rhythm, maybe yes. do a, a, a gentle yin yoga, which is, you, you know, you hardly move. It's a lot of just sort of stretching or you put on a YouTube video or watch one of Pam's videos, I guess, if you have any of those sort of stretching type of, yeah. of videos, that would be a good day. And then hopefully the next day you are recovered, recovered or uh, feeling a bit better. You haven't added more stress at least. Meanwhile, you're probably hopefully going to the doctor, talking about your symptoms, trying to sort it out. And then uh, let's say you feel a little bit more energy. And so you do go and lift some heavy weights. Uh, you yeah. get your heart rate up a little bit, maybe do some, we need cardio for our heart. We're not saying don't do cardio. We just don't do chronic cardio. So you do a hit class that would be great for the brain, getting blood flow to the brain. So if you're feeling brain fog or memory loss and cognitive decline, that would be amazing. Uh, talk about the mood, getting the, ser the, 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 what are they called? The, um, I was going to say the serotonin, the serotonin, all the epinephrine and, and all the, um, those, those happy hormones, like when you yes. go on a run, right. Um, those are great hormones to make you feel good. Right. So the, yes. I see the the benefits and then the strength of over time. Okay. Maybe it makes you feel good one day, but over time it makes you stronger. And of course you get a better body composition and then you fit into your clothes better. And I mean, you see how this all sort of spirals, but you know, like you said, the days that you're not feeling great, listen to your body and you know, do, 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 I, I'm kind of like you with the resting, the resting active resting of some kind, you know, you mm -hmm. just still go out for a walk. Um, I mean, if, unless you're injured or recovering really need, then you need to be in bed or, or not, you know, not moving very much, but those are sort of far and fewer in between, but let's talk. So was there anything there that I, I missed or perfect, need to correct? Perfect. Nope. Perfect. Okay. What about recovery as we age? How did that change I was, all? it all? Well, I, I think a lot of us, and I'm raising my hand here, uh, used to take zero days off. <laughs> And really, if you, after heavy lifting, you should not be lifting two days in a row, um, unless you break up your body parts, but you can get a great full body workout in. And I would say the next day is when you do the yoga, right? Or when you do yin is actually hurt so good. Yin class is uncomfortable because you're holding, you know, two to five minutes in a stretch. But yeah, I do. I actually have yoga um, and I have a whole stretching playlist on my YouTube channel. Oh, um, cool. The day the day after heavy lift is going to be more. Um, Zumba yoga, mm -hmm. something gentle on your body. And then the next day can be lifting. But instead of the push, 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 like we, a lot of us did in our thirties and early forties, it's, Hey, you are not going to grow unless you let your muscles recover. They don't work there. You are making micro tears in your muscles. They need a day to recover and then you can go at it again. Yeah. I I'm, I'm still, I'm, I mean, I'm a recovering, um, exercise person. And I'm, I, I'm much better now. I think the last year, uh, I've been, well, pretty much but hip osteoarthritis has shut me down a bit and I'm reversing mm -hmm. that I'm working on it. And I keep telling myself it cannot heal if I keep pounding it. So it's been over a year that I haven't done any impact exercises, which just bums me out because I love that adrenaline rush that, that these endorphins that are hit. And I, I really miss that. There are other things that I do, uh, but I think that it's really after doing the Stacey Sims uh, menopause for athletes course, it really did start to hit home that we do need to recover. We need to spend a little bit more time recovering uh, as, as we go th get through this transition, as we age. And especially if you're somebody like me and maybe you who, who, um, who have enough energy to go do it. And because we love it, 
it's kind of hard to stop. So, so give yourself time. And I do now have those days. I just don't do anything. Um, and, and where I just, I mean, I mean, I, when I say nothing, I can't go out for a walk a little bit, you know, but not necessarily planned exercise, but just to get a bit of fresh air to get the circadian rhythm set and all that. So I think that's, that's one thing that if you are somebody who likes to train, please, 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 uh, try to, Try to dial in a little bit into your body. I don't know if you know Dr. Yorth, Dr. Elizabeth Yorth. Well, she's um, a regenerative medicine doctor, and I saw her. I was watching her on her. She's she's been a guest. I think most appearances on my podcast. I love her, and she's uh, enjoys her exercise and speaks the same language as you and I do. And I was watching on her you on her Instagram, and she had torn a rotator cuff. And what she said was. I was tired that day. I didn't listen to my body. Mm. She went to the gym, started lifting. And then, then that's what happened. And she knows better than anyone else. Like, <laughs> come on. It's just, uh, it's hard when you do enjoy this kind of stuff. And you, and you be, I think it's becomes a habit in the sense that it's not it's, so much you enjoy it. It's not like I'm dying to do all this stuff. And if I don't do it, I'm going to crumble and fall apart and feel bad. But it's, it's, it's kind of like brushing my teeth. Like I get up, I go in to do some exercise of some kind. And, and, and that's the way I, I it, it happens. And it, I don't, it's the kind of thing where I, I never thought when I wake up in the morning, there's never been a dialogue, huh? Should I exercise today or should I not? I, it, it just would have been like, I don't ask myself if I'm going to brush my teeth or not. It's just, I think it's so ingrained in me that it's never a question. It's more, I should be asking myself, am I going to take a rest day today or not? But I think that's a bit more unusual. I mean, most people listening, I don't think I know. like that. No, we're, we're very similar. And it, for, it was more, as much for my mental health as for my physical health. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you were talking about that, it's interesting. I've had a couple ankle injuries where I've had to take time off from running and it was horrible. And I remember being in the ambulance and I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that with my and left ankle three times I'm doing that. I'm like, I don't think I broke anything. And the gal, the ambulance gal looked at me. She said, you're my worst nightmare because I was <laughs> missing a bunch of teeth. And I just thought, well, that's not a very nice thing to say. But I left thinking I can move my body. I can still act like my first thing was I can still exercise. <laughs> I still get, to, I mean, I still get to work out. Like I'll have to do all this stuff, but it was, it, it, for me, I was so relieved. And I know many yeah. people have to stop running as they get older, whatever, back or back or knee pain or whatever. My dad ran until he was in his mid seventies and I am built exactly like him. Very broad, not the typical skinny runner, mm -hmm. more muscular. And I just think I, I get, I get to exercise every day not every day anymore. Yeah, I yeah. get to exercise most days of the week. And that just yeah. my whole day, my brain works better when I exercise. It's a good way to put it is I can ex I go, I go exercise because I can. And when that privilege is taken away from you, uh, it's, you know, even those people who don't like to exercise and all that, once that's taken away, I think it starts to become, you want it like taken away, no more sugar, suddenly you want to eat cake and you didn't have to eat cake before, but because somebody said, no, <laughs> that's when you want the cake. Right. Yes. So yeah, no, this is, this is really good. And, and, uh, and it, yeah, it's really good for your brain. It's good for your, your hormones. It's good for everything else. There's, there's, there is, it's, I always say the sleep is the magic bullet, but I think exercises too, it just does too many things. And do you have any, do you have any thoughts on what are the risks that we take if we don't exercise appropriately uh, and regularly? Yes, yeah, so many, especially as I get older. Okay, so I'm 56. I always think if people feel bad now, how do they think they're going to feel when they're 70 or 75 or 80? And there's, I think it's up to in the United States, 74% of the population is obese. And you see, and I, I think of this all the time in the seventies, there was nobody in the grocery store with a motorized wheel. There was no motorized carts in the seventies. There was one overweight person, like in everybody's class, but people are, I don't think people realize how good they can feel if they take care of themselves. And this is the only thing 
that we cannot hire out. We can hire a chef, somebody to clean our house, wash our car, do our grocery shopping. You know, Amazon can do everything for us, but it's the only thing that we're responsible for. And I think if people want to feel amazing in their own skin, it's possible. It's never too late. It is never too late, but you have to take accountability. And there's some days, I mean, Zora, you and I are not the norm, but some days you got to say, suck it up, buttercup, let's go. Like, it's literally, you are changing the trajectory of your life. Your future self right now is cheering, like, come on, get on a regular program, eat better, eat more protein, eat more vegetables, like get out, get that sunshine, that vitamin D, that first light is so important for our bodies. You know, do some good breathing. We didn't even talk about breathing or meditation, but that's so, so important too. Um, your future self wants you to take care of yourself now. I saw my husband's dad died of obesity. My dad died of Alzheimer's, which is actually type three diabetes. Now, granted, we're all going to die. I hope for a nice aneurysm in my 95th year, something like that. <laughs> yeah. When you see people in die your of sleep, life, <laughs> in my sleep, absolutely in my sleep. When you see people die of lifestyle diseases, it is awful. It is awful. So you, like none of us can choose, right? I could have died that day that I got hit. I was very, very lucky. But the quality of your life can change by what you do today and tomorrow and next week, next month and next year. Well said. So let's talk about the sandwich generation. And that's basically refers to a woman generally in her fifties, um, who, who may still care for her children at home, even though they're older, um, Mm -hmm. at the same time as she's caring for older parents and she's got even less time to to dedicate to all the things that we've just talked about. Yep. And I don't know if you knew that caregivers have the shortest telomeres. This was, um, uh, it's from the book. I can't remember the name of the book, but I'll put it in the show notes when I remember, but their, their health, basically a caregiver's health can be seriously compromised if they don't find respite, if they don't take care of themselves. So what is one piece of advice you can give to this sandwich generation mom? Ask for help. I was just talking with a girlfriend, uh, when my dad, he came out to live in California and he was in a senior facility. Um, this is before really texting, which sounds crazy, but um, I, my kids were teenagers. My husband traveled for work. I was working. He was declining with Alzheimer's. Uh, I had one brother in the San Jose area, about two and a half hours away. Another brother across the country. I was drowning. I could not ask for help. I didn't want to burden my husband. I couldn't tell my brothers how much I was struggling. And, and then after he died, I had to stop working. I did nothing for three months. My health was in the crapper. Just yesterday, a girlfriend was telling me she has a son who's struggling mentally and he's going to have to move home and she doesn't know what to do. And I said, ask your partner for help. Ask him for a hug. Tell him what you need. Do you need him to help grocery shop? Do you need him to hire a housekeeper? Women are terrible. And I'm putting my hand up as well. We are terrible at asking for help. Mm -hmm. ask for help in any department of your life. So you could have 20 minutes to yourself. So you could go to a yoga class. So you could go to meditation, which would be amazing and wonderful. So you could maybe take a walk by yourself. I'm not saying you have an hour, you know, hours to take care of yourself and your health, but ask for help so you can do the best you can on that day. When you try to do everything like I did, it just does not work out well for your health. So whether it's, um, spending more than you want to by having prepackaged meals delivered over to your house, that's fine. Spend more money on yourself. Hiring a housekeeper so you don't have to worry about cleaning your house, that's fine. Find ways to make it work and ask for the help that you need because it is a lo- it is lonely being an island. You need your you need help along this way. It's it's impossible to do it by yourself. Good advice. That's what we learned in gerontology too. Respite. <laughs> Get a little help. You can't. I can't do it all. So. Let's move on. We have, I have to let you go soon, but I just want to get a couple more questions. Do you have a hard stop? Do you have to? Or no, you I, I don't. Okay. So when I was searching for, for more about you and your work, and I find these, these little videos, I often see you working with older adults like Frank the Tank. Yes. <laughs> and the gerontologist in me loves this. Mm-hmm. So I see you are working on their balance, their strength, mobility, agility, and, and many women listening now may have a parent who was also in their 80s, um, or maybe there is are some 80 year olds listening, um, and and she can relate to the loss of these like physical abilities. So 
maybe they're dealing with this person is dealing with a mom who had a fall and a fracture or a dad who just can't get up off the floor anymore on his own. So it can be really frightening to see your own parents degenerate before your eyes. And, and because they're after they're, they're your gene pool too. And sometimes we think this is our future selves. So what kind of advice uh, do you have for this woman to shift, uh, you know, what she's seeing, what she's thinking and, and her course of destiny? Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for staying active your whole life. Now, Frank, I have to tell you that Frank is 84 and I've been training with him for about nine years now. And he was a mailman in San Francisco, which means he walked many miles and many hills. And then he worked at a grocery store where he delivered bread. He was, he's been on his feet his entire life. He still puts his Christmas lights up. He still does yard work. So being active your whole life, I find that in our country, people retire and they sit and they don't do anything. Staying mobile, saying, even if, if you live in bad weather, going to the mall and walking inside in inclement weather is important. Uh, during COVID, I told Frank and I trained his wife as well, we are not breaking up. I went to their house to train them. And we always did things like push-ups against the kitchen counter. Everybody's got a kitchen counter and that's a great place for any age. I kind of bug my mother-in-law, like, have you done your push-ups lately? Because <laughs> uh, she's very weak. And this is something everybody can do. A squat. Uh, the number one reason after, of course, falling that people go into nursing homes is because they cannot get up off the toilet, which is a squat. Mm. Putting your kitchen chair against the counter so it doesn't move, of course. Sitting down, touching your butt and coming back up, not taking a rest. That's a squat. Practice doing that. If you did that five times Every time you go in the kitchen, that might be 50 squats a day. Yeah, It doesn't, it doesn't have to be complicated, but it, you do have to put time into it. And then a lot of times you saw, saw me practice the balance with Frank, turn around and touch that kitchen chair with one hand and have one leg go behind you that, or even touch a kitchen counter as a, you know, so it's start a little bit easier, but practicing those, those very basic skills for an older person, you could do it with them. Uh, it, it would be really helpful to do those things every day. Because the more you sit, the more you're not going to feel great as you age. You, well, you will fall. I know. And I did a video, Zora, on, uh, on TikTok. I always talk to my classes, always like, we're doing an exercise, we're on a mat, get on your back, and then stand up. I've done it my whole career. And I did one on TikTok, it went TikTok crazy. And the comments I got from people, I have knee replacements, I have hip replacements, I have spinal fusion, my belly's in the way. And I was like, I was just kind of saying you should be able to do it because I have a friend who's a firefighter locally who said 60% of his calls are for people that fall in their homes and cannot get up. Oh, wow. That's too big of a number. <laughs> it's too big of a number. So after that video, I did another one with starting on your hands and knees and then starting seed, like a different, a bunch of different options. Like how, I don't want anybody to have to fall and call the fire department to get up. Yeah. Yeah. We should be able to be mobile. So getting on your hands and knees and practice and being by a couch, if you're elderly and practicing standing up. Yeah. If you fall and you don't have your cell phone, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. So, so get your, if you got a mom or dad, uh, let's, you know, get, get them on doing, get, get off the floor by themselves. Like just do it. I think that's, that's super important. Uh, yeah. And, and that's advocating for older adults. It's advocating for your parents so that they can be independent. So they're less reliant on you, right? <laughs> like yeah. they're going to be calling you to get up off the floor. So just go teach them how to get well, off, and off the floor. And Zora, I know you probably, you probably read this as well. Grip strength is really important. When you lose your grip strength, that's a big sign of aging. So lately I've been having Frank hold a kettlebell and, you know, walk 20 yards and come back. And I noticed his posture was really good when he did that. Mm. Now he, he walks a mile every Sunday to his local coffee shop. I bought him a 10 pound kettlebell so he could walk <laughs> and he switches hands. And then halfway, it's too long to take it the whole way. There's a little park. He puts it, he hides it at the park. And he's like, I just walk so much taller. I'm like, yeah. yeah, great. But when you when you can't open jars when you can't hold on to things, that's a sign of deterioration. So you always want to be able to hold on to heavier things in your kitchen. So whether it's, you know, if you can give your mom or dad a gallon of milk, 
have them hold it and walk around the house for a minute and then do it again with the other hand. That would be a great exercise to do. I have a question that just came to mind. Um, people who follow me know that I'm a big fan of katsu bands. This is blood flow restriction. And I was fascinated. And the first thing that fast, the first thing that came to my mind was this is a tool for all older adults or people who are injured or had surgery and cannot do all the stuff that we're saying to do. What are your thoughts? Do you know what Katsu, Katsu is a brand name. I saw the video of you doing it, but I don't know anything about them. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. I'm, have you heard of blood flow restriction bands in general? Yes. yes. Okay. Cause that's really into the fitness world. Cause when I was searching for what's, what's blood flow restriction, when I first found out about it, you got two camps, you get the bodybuilders trying to build muscle real fast, with low weights or none, none at all. And then you have the, the rehab people dealing with people who are injured and surgeries and all that stuff. And they just don't want to lose their muscle mass. And because I been sort of up on blocks since March, I mean, February, March, I haven't been able to do what I normally like to do. I have, I got these, these bands and katsu is different because it's, 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 it's a band that you wear on your arms or your legs, never at the same time. And it has um, a cycle mode where it, inf inf it fills with air for 30 seconds and then releases for five seconds and just goes fills and releases. So it's very gentle. It doesn't hurt. It, you hardly notice it. And you, and you just carry on when I do a, just a traditional band, which is a, a glorified tourniquet, <laughs> you just, okay. you can see the, you know, the veins are pumping and it's hurt. So after 10 minutes, I got to put that down. And, uh, and then there's contraindications for people who have heart conditions and they shouldn't be going off and doing this stuff without asking their doctor or getting some guidance. Whereas the katsu bands, they were made for cardiac rehab patients. They were made for older adults are made originally, and now they're used for many other things. But so I, there, I have to differentiate those two, but I am a huge fan because for as little as I've been doing, my muscle mass is pretty much, you know, the same or not, not that far from, you know, when I was training. Now, do you wear them while you're working out? Yeah, I wear them when I work out and, or, uh, when I'm on the kitchen, in the kitchen cooking, or I'm on the computer and I measure my muscle mass and I'm amazed when I was first started them, I was like, just use them on the computer. And I gained like 0.5% muscle. Mass. I mean, it wasn't huge, but I was like, Oh my God, that's not like, how can that happen within like a couple of weeks? And I was like, that's amazing because, you know, I was worried about losing a lot of muscle mass. Like you just had your accident when you, when you yeah. just had it, you were like, I, I lost a lot of muscle. It goes yeah. so fast. And, uh, I've been, I'm just a huge fan because I've been on them since March this year. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I will not let them go. I look like a freak sometimes going to the gym and <laughs> like all these, cause I got the ones with the tubes and yeah, but I don't care. I, I, I see the benefits and then I've, I've recommended to people who have told me the same thing and, um, uh, and I, I just love them. So I would love to know and your then, thoughts about what, what this just be a far in general, what you know about it. Nothing, but I want to get them now. <laughs> oh, go research them. It's K A A T S U dot com okay. and they are all over the world. And they gave me a discount code because I did a podcast with them. And I'm pretty sure it's Zora, Z R A, like all my other discount codes. But you know, if you want it, just let me know and I'll make sure I, I find it and then connect you. Um, but or listen to the podcast. I'll put the podcast that I did with okay. them so you can listen to it. It's just uh, it's it's one thing to hear and go, yeah, but then because I've had my own experience and I've seen others, I'm you know, that's when I become supercharged about talking about something uh, when like the aura or something, whatever. It's just you see it. And why not? It's a it's a pretty cool stuff. So, yeah, you're going to love it. I'm so excited. I introduced something to you. Yes, oh, thank you. <laughs> cool. OK, so then. Um, before we wrap up, I, so let's get, let's talk about three easy things that a woman in peri or postmenopause can do today to feel better tomorrow. And you gave some great tips already, like the protein, uh, get that in. And you talked about strength training and, and also walking through the park or getting your lowering your cortisol. You gave us so many great nuggets here, but if, we got to do three. You can repeat them or you can add new ones as you like. Okay. Sleep has got to be number one. And I know our phones are so fun to play on, but really put it down an hour before you go to sleep. If That's not so easy for some people. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I, I know, but it, <laughs> Just it, revs, it revs up your brain and it really does make sleep 
not as good. So sleep number one, I would definitely say a gratitude practice. Mm -hmm. Go to bed and be thankful for everything that happened. And every day above ground is a great day. That's stealing from a pit bull song, but truly every day above ground is a great day. And then when you wake up, what are you I, thankful for your pillow, your bed, you know, the day to come. I, it is so important to have gratitude because we've all, we all have go, go through hard times. Um, so I think that's really important. And, and journaling is not for everyone, but I would definitely say sleep, gratitude, and make your health a priority for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's such a, those are good ones. Um, simple and doable. And I, I think that's, those are wonderful tips. So tell us, okay, one, th all the things that we talked about were, oh, before we go, I have two more questions. So one is <laughs> your motto is love yourself to health. What do you mean by that? Yes. Unfortunately, many women, when I would train them, they want to tell me the bad. I don't like this. I don't like that. I ate this. I hate this. And it got to the point where I would just put my hand up and I wouldn't even let them continue. And I'd say, you have to tell me three things you like about yourself right now. And it was shocking the amount of women who couldn't find one thing to say. And I still remember mm. specifically one woman who I'm, I'm actually training her again right now. This was before COVID. So five or six years ago, she started crying. Aww. She couldn't think of one thing. And I'm like, you are, oh my gosh, you're an amazing mom, amazing grandma. Your eyes are so beautiful. You have great hair. You come to the gym, you are so regular and consistent. And I rattled off like 10 things. And it makes me so sad because as women, we give and love to everyone else in our lives, but so often we don't show ourselves love. And it's like the oxygen mask. Like you honestly have to love yourself more than everybody else so you can give to other people. Where many just, they, they want to play the hate game. Like, stop that. You are amazing. We have all gone through so many things. We've birthed children. We've gone through death. We've gone through life. We've changed careers. We, we've, we've done life. We're amazing. You have to see how amazing you are. So my go-to is, first of all, talk to yourself like you talk to your best friend or your pet. Come on. You only talk to your pet with love every single day. And all the love you show that pet, what if you turned it around? And I've told clients, look in the mirror and talk to yourself in that same voice. You're like, stop it. And I'm like, no, really. What if you showed yourself what you give to everybody else? You need to do that. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you. I'm like, I'm going to make that one a real, because that's just too, it's too, too true and too much we don't do enough. So, okay. My gosh, my battery is dying. So hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to try to plug in. Hold on. This part will be edited out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to stand like this. <laughs> okay, oh wait. Her better remember to edit this one out. Okay. Um, so tell us about your courses because someone who's listening now may go, I have been, don't have the motivation. I don't know where to start. And even though you say take baby steps, they still need someone to help them go through it. And, or maybe they're afraid of lifting heavy weights or I don't know. You've got a website called theperfectbalance.guru, and I saw you have a bunch of courses out there. So what are the differences? And tell us what people can find there. Yeah, I just created Love Yourself to Health for that very reason. And it's a very short course. There's six modules. The seventh module is a wrap-up of everything. 
each module is about five to seven minutes and it's more about your mindset because as you know Zora it all starts with mindset and there are so many women that are feel they're not worthy they say yes to everyone else in the in their lives but not to themselves it's more finding their why saying no to others is saying yes to yourself it is getting back to who you are i'm always amazed at the women that i talk to i say tell me about yourself because i'm a health coach like you are and the first thing they say is i'm a wife i'm a mother I'm like no 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 who are you so getting back to who is that little girl inside you what makes that little girl happy do you like to hula hoop do you like to ride your bike who are you so i really wanted to create this to make it easy to listen to in the car or on a walk with action items like very easy homework to journal about getting back to you and making yourself value yourself and know that you're worth the time it takes to take care of yourself and your health. Cause I don't have time is, is not right because everybody makes time for the things they want to do minus the caregivers who are so stressed beyond belief minus that group of people. But how long you spend on TikTok? It's easy to get sucked into those animal videos. I'm telling you that right now, but it's and really, babies. <laughs> oh, the baby ones. Yes. Yeah. And so that's, I, I wanted to create that. It's short, but it's less than an hour for the whole thing. But I've, it's, it's my 27 years of working with women and all the excuses I've heard on ladies, if not now, when, when you're 80, you're going to say, I wish I would have taken care of myself. I want women to have the tools to say, oh my God, I'm worth getting up 20 minutes earlier to get outside, breathe, take a 10 minute video and then get ready for my day. I want them to know, I want them to know their value. Mm -hmm. So that, that just came out. And of course your listener is going to discount because I'm super excited about the course. Oh, yay. Um, yes. A hundred dollar discount. Oh, which, perfect. Is, yeah. How do they get it's that? Love, you got to send they go me to my, Yep. They go to my website, theperfectbalance.guru and it's love 100 for a hundred dollar discount. Oh my God. Let me write that down. Love 100. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to let you go now. Now, before I do, you already said so many wonderful things, uh, but I, if there's anything else, do you have any last words for a woman who's going through this menopause transition now? If you have not gotten your hormones checked, please go to your doctor and get them checked. And please don't think about that one study that was not accurate saying hormones are bad for you. Hormones can make your life so much better. Your body wants to be in homeostasis. Don't be scared. Don't gut it out. Don't think hot flashes are normal and you have to live through them. You can get help. So please see. And if you don't have a great doctor, contact Zora. I will also work with the clinic with Karen Martell um, that they're excellent and they want you to feel good in this stage of life. It doesn't have to be the, oh my gosh, I'm on fire every single day. We should be feeling vibrant and amazing because we are, we're in our, we are fifties. We are in our fabulous fifties and sixties and beyond, of course. Yes. Oh my gosh, for sure. Thank you so much. I'm going to have links to the courses you offer, the website, perfectbalance.guru. I'm going to have links to your Instagram, your TikTok, Thank your you. YouTube, your FaceTube, FaceTube, your Facebook. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm super excited that everyone who's learned a little something new today, uh, Pam, got to have you on again. Uh, we can talk forever and I hope to meet you in person. So thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. That was so, so much fun. Thank you very much.